Well, good day everybody. This is Chris back again with the Ancient Scholar and today what I'd like to talk about, I'd like to talk about a very large group of enzymes. Um, they're involved in phase one biotransformation. So up to this point we've talked about the cytochrome P450 um, oxidase enzymes. Um, we have talked about the uh, flavin or flavin monooxygenase uh, family of enzymes and now today I'm going to talk about yet another large diverse group of uh, enzymes that are um, uh, pretty important actually, pretty common. Uh, and you've, if you've taken any biochemistry, you've uh, probably uh, used these enzymes in, in some of the basic experiments you do. And these are known as the um, hydrolase enzymes. Now, the hydrolase enzymes uh, are enzymes that are non-metallic. They do, they do not have metallic um, prosthetic groups. Uh, nor do they have a flavin um, prosthetic groups, uh, prosthetic group, uh, but rather the enzyme has um, several amino acid residues inside of them, and we'll talk about these. I probably have to do a separate video on this, but you basically have a, a common situation where you have several different residues that all work together to catalyze a hydrolysis reaction. We'll talk about what a hydrolysis reaction is. Um, and three enzymes, in, or three um, amino acid residues in, in particular in the active site are involved in um, the transfer of an electron, um, uh, electrons and protons, and this is known as the catalytic triad. And then there's another area in the active site, which is generally what we call, we call the hydrophobic pocket, where the kind of the hydrophobic part of the substance that's being metabolized or biotransformed can fit. And then you have the, um, the functional group that is being acted upon um, by the enzyme, um, where the hydrolysis reaction is occurring. And that functional group can be uh, several different types of, of groups. So, Let's go ahead and just talk real quickly about the hydrolase enzymes. Like I said, they're a pretty large, pretty diverse uh, group of uh, molecules, or enzymes rather. Um, and they, they're basically their name, when we name them, we name them on the type of bond um, that they are breaking. These enzymes are, are typically breaking um, chemical bonds in large molecules. You break the bond by adding, but by basically breaking a water molecule and adding a um, oxygen and a hydro uh, oxygen group, oxygen atom to one part of the molecule and a hydroxyl group to the other part of the molecule. That's what uh, what happens when you have um, ionization of water, if you will. And you can ionize it into a hydrogen, into a proton, and and a hydroxyl um, ion, and that's what you can use to break these these bonds. Um, so yeah, so let's talk about um, hydrolases. So hydrolases obviously catalyze hydrolysis. Hydrolysis is a pretty common, naturally occurring chemical reaction that occurs uh, in the body. It's just that it doesn't occur very quickly in under physiological pHs. So these enzymes, of course, can catalyze that and make them occur uh, more quickly, more efficiently. So, in general, there are several different types of hydrolase enzymes. Um, there are enzymes that work on um, the peptide bonds, uh, the breaking peptide bonds. We call these peptidases. Um, if we're breaking lipids, um, lipid bonds, uh, we can call them lipases. Um, have a special group that I'll talk about actually on their own, um, known as epoxide hydrolases. Um, and then you have the very common, very relevant to xenobiotic biotransformation, the um, carboxyl esterases, or some people will just call these the esterases. And these are um, enzymes, these are hydrolysis enzymes that um, through hydrolysis, through catalyzing hydrolysis, break an ester bond, an ester functional group. So you have some molecule and part, you know, you have a part of a molecule here, you have your ester group and then the other part of the molecule. And if you break that ester bond by, by hydrolysis, you can break that into two different uh, metabolites. Um, now you could replace that ester functional group with, uh, you know, some other functional groups. Um, 
and you'd have basically the same mechanism occurring. So what I want to do is I just want to show you guys uh, what's going on here. So if you can imagine that uh, here I have just some molecule and um, I have, uh, of course, I have my, my ester, my ester group here. I have carbon double bonded to uh, an oxygen here. And then um, and I have my oxygen here. And then this is just my R. These are my R groups. And this is, you know, something here and something here, right? Or maybe it looks like that, but whatever. You know, this is part of a molecule. This is part, another part of the molecule. And here is my ester functional group. And so what happens is um, the ester, okay, part of that, so that it, it kind of slides into the, um, the enzyme and the hydrophobic, wherever the hydrophobic part of the molecule, whatever that molecule is, um, interacts with the hydrophobic pocket. It slides into the enzyme and then I actually take water molecule here. So the water molecule comes in and it is used, okay, it, 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 the water molecule undergoes hydrolysis. Okay, it's broken into a hydroxyl um, anion and a proton or a or hydrogen. Okay, and what happens is in that process of breaking this water, I can actually break this bond and I can convert this bond. Let me uh, just uh, show you guys here. Um, in the in 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 the setting of an ester, I can break that bond by by breaking the water molecule. I can hydroxylate one part. Okay, so I had add a hydroxyl group here, and so this part of the molecule here has been hydroxylated. So I have a um, what do I have? Well, I have a O. Okay, double bond OH here. So I still have my double bond O, but I have a hydroxyl group here. That's where this part of the water molecule went. Um, so what do I have here? Well, this is a carboxylic acid, right? COOH. So that's some carboxylic acid. Okay, so I have my carboxylic acid, and then I have my OH. So that's where this little guy went to the oxygen here okay, and created an alcohol. So I had my original molecule here, which was held together by an ester bond, blah, 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 whatever, blah, 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 whatever. Okay, I broke a water molecule, and I broke that into two separate molecules, uh, one molecule being an alcohol, okay, and then another molecule being a carboxylic acid. Um, now, I could do this with many different, I could do this with thioesters as well. And instead of um, an oxygen, um, I could replace the oxygen with a sulfur atom. I'd have a thioester and I'd have hydrolysis. I'd have the same reaction and I'd have my carboxylic acid. And instead of um, an alcohol, I'd have a thiol. I'd have a sulfur um, hydrogen instead of an oxygen hydrogen. Um, I could do that with an amide as well. Okay, um, I just have nitrogen. I would have um, my carboxylic acid, and instead of the alcohol, I'd have an amine. I would have a, a instead. I'd have instead of this, I'd have a NH2. Um, but the the basic mechanism is still the same. Um, so when it comes to uh, talking about biotransformation, I want to spend a little more time talking about the esterases in general, the ester bond, because there is some significance. Um, but just know that you can have lipases, uh, epoxide hydrolases, nucleotidases, you know, if you break up nucleotides, um, uh, peptidases, uh, lipase, et cetera, et cetera, okay? And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about more specific types of hydrolases, in specifically the carboxyl esterases or the esterase enzymes, and I'll do that in a, uh, subsequent videos. Okay, guys, hopefully you found that uh, rambling rather helpful. As always, thanks for hanging in there.